Recently, I published a video shown here where I taught people how to put 3D text into a fusion composition in DaVinci Resolve. After it was uploaded, I needed a thumbnail. This is the first iteration of it, and with a few simple tricks in the color page, I was able to get it to look like this. Yes, it is a subtle difference, but when YouTube takes your thumbnail and squishes it down to show it in somebody's feed, everything has to be readable on it. And I didn't find the text to be that readable. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the curves section of the color page. So welcome back to Create a Reality, my friend. I'm John, and I'm gonna be your tour guide in the color page today. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve, and I'll show you what we're working with. Here we have my thumbnails project. There's an info card above to show you how I do my thumbnails in DaVinci Resolve. But we're looking at the thumbnail for this 3D text video. And as you can see here, it gets pretty dark. The green gets dark over here. So we just need to brighten that up. And there's a bunch of ways to do it, but we're gonna use the curves and a mask in the color page to fix this. And we've already disabled everything else. If I re-enable the DaVinci Resolve logo and click on the color page icon, it'll select the DaVinci Resolve logo. We don't want that. So we will press our D key and disable that clip. So the topmost enabled clip is now Fusion Clip 2. So then we click the color icon, it brings us in here. We've been through this in a couple of other videos, but we're gonna concentrate on this node section and the curve section here, and then we're gonna go into masks, which is right here. Well, they call it window, same thing. Anyway, we're gonna start by creating a new node, but we need it behind the other node. So I'm gonna press Alt S, which creates a serial node, and I'm gonna disconnect the output and disconnect the input just by clicking on the second half of the link and then move it out of the way, move this one over and I can bring this one up and holding shift, it drops it right in line. See that? I hold shift and it's in. If you hold shift again, unlike the fusion page, it won't disconnect. But now it's set up right, except we need to reconnect our output here so that it all looks right over here. All right. Now it's set up. Now we can work with what we've got. So the first thing we need to do is brighten up this green. So for that, we're gonna come over to our curves button. If you don't see it, if you're on some other screen, just click on the little S curve and it'll start you out in curves custom. You can play with this to your heart's content, but that's not what we're here for. This is more for a general color grading. So I'm gonna hit my reset button over here. And then all these over here are other ways to manipulate the colors. So the next one is hue versus hue. So if I wanted a different green, I could use my dropper icon, which appears because this window is selected, click on it and drag it up and down and it changes it. And don't worry about this. I have a magic mask over here for kind of cutting the background out, right? I did a tutorial on magic mask, it's right here. Watch it if you wanna learn it, if you've got the studio version of Resolve. Everything else we're doing is in the free version. But we don't wanna change this, so again, we're gonna hit reset. The next one is gonna be hue versus sat. So this is pretty cool. If I use my dropper again to grab green, then I can drop the saturation down to where it's black and white. And again, it's, it's messing with the magic mask, but we'll reset it. The third one over, that's the one we want, hue versus loom. So what this is gonna do is change our luminance based on the hue that we select. So let's dive in, we've got our dropper, see it right there? I'll click on the middle of the X and it selects green. Now, if you want a wider swath of colors to change, you can grab the handles on left and right and you can drag them up or down or just over because when you grab the middle one, it's gonna change things. See how the text is getting brighter? Yeah, we don't want all of that. So we're gonna press Control Z, Control Z. Now we just have a narrow band of green that's gonna be affected. And this comes in handy if you have other green stuff. We're gonna mask this out in a little bit, but I just want that to be brighter. So since we're in the hue versus loom, when I drag it up, you'll see that it makes the text brighter. Ta-da, that looks pretty good. But we have a problem. I wanna keep the shine over here without making it completely white. So that's where our masking is gonna come in handy. And I'm just gonna fine tune that to be right where I want it. And then we're gonna click on our window icon and you've got linear, circle, polygon, curve, and gradient. Now we could add a circle by clicking on circle and then bring it over here and it changes just what's inside of the circle. And then you can change the feathering 
with the red dots and the overall size, you can make an ellipse or you can just change the whole thing and keep it scale, right? But we don't want a circle mask. So with the circle mask selected, we'll press delete. And the same things work for linear and you can do polygons and curves as well, but we want gradient today. And if you see, when I drag this around, it changes where things are affected. Everything above this line or on this side of the line is affected. Everything on the other side is not up to this point. And when I hover over the triangle, I get this rotation arrow. This allows us to drag not only the angle, but also the length of the gradient. So we can move this over here and I wanna bring it all the way over like this. And then as I drag it back, you'll see that the EX and the T are dark, but everything's light over here. So we're only affecting from here over to here. So we want this to be a little bit longer and we want to kind of keep my hand and my shirt out of the way. And then when I drag this over, maybe that's about right. And this is all fine tuning and what you want out of it. So we can move this around, but we need this kind of gradient right there and right about there. This way it doesn't affect my sweatshirt or my hand much, but it brings the brightness level up on the text. And if I bring that right there, I think that's right. And we keep our shine over here. See, I've got my shine. Control Z to move it back, there we go. So now we have it in position and it's only going to affect the green text. Isn't that slick? That's pretty slick, right? Boop the like button. And now going back to our curve, we can fine tune this a little bit further. We can just drag all the way up on here. You can see it's black and then it goes all the way to bright. And we just wanna keep it centered on this line right here, cause that's a spike. You can see in the histogram here where most of the colors are. There's some reds and maybe a teal there, but this green spike is our text. So we're only affecting our text here, and that's pretty bright. I kind of like that. And now that I have the mask right where I want it, I gotta go mess with my magic mask and fix that real quick. So I'm just going to draw a blue line right here, and it'll pick up all that, we're good to go. We come back to our edit page, and here's the after. And if I enable this copy I made, there's the before. After, before. So using those quick tips in the curve section of the color page and a little bit of masking with the window area, I was able to fix the thumbnail without having to go in and muck about in Fusion, right? And you can use this on regular footage that wasn't shot in RAW or Log or anything like that. Just make some fine tuning adjustments. And as you saw, I made some fine tune adjustments, right? Did you enjoy the video? Boop the like button if you did. Maybe consider subscribing. Until next time, check out this video that YouTube has picked for you, and I hope you're having a great day. John out.